हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज सिक्स ऑफ जुलाई एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइस इन द टुडे इज़ वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर ऑल द आर्टिकल्स विद द बैकग्राउंड एज वेल एज वे फॉरवर्ड वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गाइज लेट सी द ओवर ऑफ एंटायर न्यूज़ सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट विच आर्टिकल्स आर एक्चुअली इंपॉर्टेंट इन द टुडे इज न्यूज़ Now I would also like to tell you that you can download the synoptic notes of this particular session from our Telegram channel. In these synoptic notes, you will get all the background as well as the related information. Now, uh, so this is the today's newspaper. Now, guys, here we can see the on first page largely the political articles have been given, which is not important for the examination. These political commentaries, etc., is not important. then guys uh, moving on in the city section shots fired in the sazari court complex now guys basically uh, first of all this particular issue is not important but you need to understand this particular thing that this shows the degrading problem of the law and order because multiple incidents of firing of uh, violence in the court complexes have happened so for the such kind of a things there needs to be the zero tolerance policy okay uh, by the enforcement agencies then further moving on we have these uh, tenders etc okay uh, advertisements okay bombay high court notice to state government on panel on interfaith marriages okay now uh, understand this uh, understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about the interfaith marriages okay so first of all there is the special marriage act okay special marriage act under the special marriage act the interfaith marriages provision has been given okay so uh, basically in this particular capacity the uh, interfaith panel uh, uh, basically a panel has been constituted so for that particular matter the notice has been sent okay then further moving on uh, uh, the cities or uh, the state section we largely have again these political commentaries etc will directly reach to the editorial page striking a blow against affirmative action in america now guys uh, the article is not important article is talking about the student for fair admission judgment that has been given by the us supreme court okay so again moving on this direction much important substance is not contained however below we have this article choosing a new palette for india's creative economy this is important for our exam we'll take this article then further diminishing returns so india recent uh, india uh, had just two days back and uh, has carried the virtual summit of sco so key takeaways from there we'll take this article then next article next page an inclusive social policy for migrants again a good and an important article we'll see this particular article also then further moving on no muslim mps even in states with the high muslim presence okay so this is a data point the article is giving the numbers with respect to the uh, uh, different different political parties how many of the muslim legislators they have floated and all such data are given uh, moving on guys uh, beyond this nothing much there is there then in text and context we have the risk of zaporizhia nuclear power plant now understand guys one particular issue that as this russia ukraine war is going on okay this nuclear power plant has been captured by the russian authorities and now russia as well as ukraine both are saying that the other party wants to sabotage wants to attack on this nuclear power plant russia says that the ukraine might attack and ukraine says that the russia might sabotage the nuclear power plant now understand this thing guys that if there is any kind of an attack that happens on this nuclear power plant it might lead to a nuclear meltdown chernobyl like incident that happened in 1986 which will take a lot of lives and will impact the people beyond russia ukraine in the other parts of the europe also moreover guys there is also a possibility for example one country carries an attack on nuclear power plant and says that the other country has carried the attack so the sabotage of nuclear power plant okay zaporizhia nuclear power plant is there now one more thing guys is that uh, you are not required to go too much in detail and understand that how many reactors are there how much fuel they use how much electricity they produce that microscopic details for our upsc exam are not important and they are not asked in the examination if it would have been a plant in india then we would have uh, seen it but otherwise not important okay so that is all guys about uh, one thing is that often these uh, questions come on the locations in the news for example recently that zaporizhia nuclear power plant was in news it is in which country it is in ukraine it is now captured by russia 
then further moving on now this is important article iran's induction in the shanghai cooperation organization we'll take this article and why iran is important in su we'll take this then further moving on so here we have the bibliography article okay so great expectations uh, okay so basically we see this particular thing that often on the great place movies dramas depictions are made okay so there is a novel great expectation so on which that on that the screen plays going on uh, again guys for the exam no need to go too much in detail in this article if you want to read it out of interest you can but for exam no need to go here then further uh, here we have an important article cabinet gives note to data protection bill we'll take this particular article okay uh, then schools in manipur reopen after two year two months because of the crisis that was going on okay then there are these political statements etc that are there okay so we will skip this particular section chandrayaan 3 integrated with launch vehicle lvm 3 now uh, guys no need to track this particular article actually if you remember we have discussed that now india is planning for chandrayaan 3 mission now chandrayaan 3 mission would be launched in the month of july so chandrayaan 2 that got failed because of the lander and rover they were not a the lander was about to make a soft landing on moon but that landing went in some trouble and then the rover was not able to deploy so chandrayaan 2 was not a success and as chandrayaan 2 was not a success to repeat what chandrayaan 2 was not able to do chandrayaan 3 is being launched so this chandrayaan 3 has been integrated with the launch vehicle and somewhere in the month of july it will be launched between july 12 to july 19 the window of launch would be there the dates would be finalized so right now nothing is important in this particular article when the launch will happen and uh, by the time of your exam if some uh, information or if some finding will be given by chandrayaan 3 then that is important so i hope that you are able to understand okay because often many number of times we are uh, collecting the useless information which either will become redundant by the time exam will come or anyhow not useful that wastes a lot of time okay then uh, moving on india not averse to imposing barrier to clean energy import says union minister so basically guys uh, see if you know or well, now for these particular things you have to follow the newspaper analysis regularly we have discussed uh, that national green hydrogen mission was launched by india and india wants to become the exporter global hub of the green hydrogen now if india will export the green hydrogen to the other countries let's say the developed countries there is a possibility that they will impose a duty they will impose the tax on india's green hydrogen so the india has said that if on india's hydrogen the tax will be imposed by the developed country then we will also impose the custom duties on the inputs of clean energy that we are taking them for example solar panels if we are importing from them we will also import that so india will also do that particular thing okay then further moving on uh, here uh, on the world page we have largely the law and order related issues and here a global rupee may raise volatility we'll see this particular article and then guys in the last in the last there is a science page and in the science page there are this new smart bandages that have been discussed now what is the smart bandage what will be the advantage of it all these things will be taking up here so that is all about it and now let's take the all the relevant articles one by one in detail okay so every class we start with the gs quotation today we'll take the quotation from tony honor so tony honor says equality is opportun uh, equality of opportunity is the essence of social justice so when we talk about social justice social justice is any tool which is brought or which is used to eradicate the social injustice that prevails in the society caste discrimination gender inequality are the social injustices to deal with that you need social justice any social justice tool will be focusing at equality primarily so equality of opportunity is the essence of every social justice tool you can use this particular idea with respect to your gs paper number 2 issues related to social justice as well as gs paper number 4 ethics now the first article for the today so the first article is this cabinet gives note to that uh, data protection bill now first of all let's understand some background this particular article will be important for gs paper number 2 fundamental rights within fundamental right right to privacy we can use this particular article now 
बेसिकली गाइज वट हैपेंड वट हैपेंड गवर्नमेंट सॉरी सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन इट्स के एस पुटास्वामी जजमेंट के एस पुटास्वामी जजमेंट रूल्ड दैट राइट टू राइट टू प्राइवेसी इज कंटेंड विद इन द आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड इन ऑर्डर टू सिक्योर द राइट टू प्राइवेसी गवर्नमेंट हैज टू कम आउट विद द डेटा प्रोटेक्शन लॉ और द लॉ विच प्रोटेक्ट द प्राइवेसी ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल्स इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर डायरेक्शन गाइज वॉट हैपेंड गवर्नमेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड बी एन श्री कृष्णा कमेटी गवर्नमेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड द बी एन श्री कृष्णा कमेटी ओके बी एन श्री कृष्णा कमेटी नाउ द बी एन श्री कृष्णा कमेटी रिकमेंडेड द ड्राफ्ट प्रोटेक्शन डेटा प्रोटेक्शन लॉ दिस रिकमेंडेशन वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू द पार्लियामेंट ऑल्सो वी केम आउट विद द पर्सनल डेटा प्रोटेक्शन बिल but this particular bill was retracted back by the government last year that is 2022 this particular bill was introduced around 2019 20 but it was taken back in 2022 now again a new data protection bill will be introduced into the parliament into the monsoon session last year its draft was issued in the public now this bill will be issued into the parliament in monsoon session and before a bill is presented the cabinet has to give approval that yes you can bring this particular bill so now the cabinet has given the approval to this particular bill now let's understand the uh, basically what are the important provisions of this particular bill that are there <clears throat> some more information guys is that as this bill will finally be placed into the parliament then more details will come as of now we have just preliminary information about this particular bill so first of all this particular uh, first of all guys apart from the data protection bill telecommunication bill might also be brought into the parliament which was also uh, intro a uh, draft was floated last year now this particular data protection bill will focus on management of the personal data of the indian resident okay now often guys you are generating a lot of data on internet you are submitting your aadhar information to the government there is a possibility that your aadhar data is being used by some other third private party your mobile number is being used by some third private party right now they are not bound to take your consent they are not bound to take your approval but now taking the explicit consent will become important without taking the consent if they are using the bill then on them the fines and the penalties can be imposed and the common people they can complain to the data protection board so this data protection board will consist of the technical experts and this data protection board will be notified by the government of india so if you find that your information or your data is being used without your consent or if you have withdrawn the consent but still they are using the data you can complain to this data protection board okay then the next thing is that this data protection digital data protection bill will also specify the principles on whose basis the entities can collect the data what type of data they can collect what type of data they cannot collect how the data can be processed what are the safeguards that they have to use while they are storing the data so all these standards with respect to the data collection data storing data processing will also be provided in this particular bill that is the draft digital personal data protection uh, uh, digital personal data protection bill now guys when we talk about this particular bill this bill has been inspired from the european union's gdpr that is general data protection regulation now general data protection regulation is the data protection law for the european union which have been finalized after many many years and we have also decided 23 instances where where the approval has not to be taken let's take one example suppose a person has caught in an accident now that particular person is to be reached to the hospital so now the person is unconscious will you wait this person gives me the consent that when i whether i can take you to the hospital or not so in this case you don't require the consent of that particular person for example that person is to be admitted into the hospital this person is in an accident state is to be admitted into the hospital you take from his pocket his wallet his aadhar information and all such kind of a thing and use that information to in the hospital do you need consent no the consent is not needed for example for law and order situation law and order situation fine the data is to be processed 
should we take consent no the consent is not to be taken so there are certain instances where the consent will not be taken further guys understand this particular thing okay, that the bill also provides that the personal data can be processed in the interest of prevention detection investigation or prosecution of any offense okay or uh, into the india's national interest the data can be processed without taking the approval so these provisions are also there then guys basically there are also the penalties for example for example facebook has a lot of your personal data uh, amazon has a lot of your personal data your card information etc if these entities leak your data or because of their fault that data gets breached then the penalties up to 250 crore rupees can be imposed on these organizations okay and if some other firm has done some data breach then you can file a complaint against them also clear fine so this is something now guys one very important aspect of this data protection bill is there is that this data protection bill is being introduced as the tech agnostic bill now what is the tech agnostic means agnosticism is you don't know what will happen what will unfold okay for example buddha was agnostic with respect to the idea of god now buddha says that neither i reject nor i accept so tech agnostic is that basically we don't know how the technology will unfold tomorrow see we have come out with this chat gpt generative artificial intelligence it is black box we don't know how it will unfold so if today we come out with a rigid bill then that things which will unfold will not be accounted so this particular bill will be highly flexible to accommodate the new changes that will come as the chat gpt will evolve artificial intelligence will evolve all such kind of things one more thing not mentioned in this particular article but guys with respect to the data localization what this bill says now data localization what it is see uh, now suppose you are giving your card information to amazon now obviously amazon will store that particular information now that information right now is stored into the servers physical servers that are located outside the country data location localization provides that if you are storing any information information is stored to be in the physical servers within our country so physical servers should be in the home country that is the data localization reserve bank of india 3 4 years back came out with this directive that data localization should be implemented in india now guys what is the stand of this bill on the data localization so bill doesn't enforces the strict data localization it provides that data could be carried to some other countries but only to those countries whose list will be notified by the government okay so this is its condition on the data localization then guys one criticism of this particular bill has also come with respect to the rti so basically this particular bill is also bringing an amendment into the RTA Act of 2005. Now, basically the bill provides this particular thing that we will not give the information, okay, we will not give any personal information, okay, from any government department will not give any personal information. Now, you see this thing, under RTI, you can ask information from the public authorities, but data protection bill is talking about say, not sharing the information. So, it, this change will be brought into the RTI that government will not give any personal information under the RTI. The RTI activists say that it will dilute the RTI there. Government selectively will withhold the information saying that it is a personal information. So, government will get the unfettered power. So, this is all the issues that have come in this particular direction. Now, moving to the next article, <coughs> India, uh, Iran's induction in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Iran's induction in SCO. So, uh, basically, guys, uh, if you have seen yesterday's newspaper analysis, yesterday also we have taken this particular issue. So, this issue we'll see with respect to GS paper number two, international affairs. GS paper number two, international affairs. Now, uh, one thing, uh, guys, here, see this, this particular thing, that now 2023, 2023. India is the chair of G20. Also, India has chaired the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In this particular direction, guys, there are two articles that have come in the today's newspaper. This is one article and one article is from the editorial section also. Now, first of all, let's take some of the basic information. When we talk about the SCO, 
एस सी ओ वॉज इनिशियली फॉर्मड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स एज द शंघाई फाइव तो दीज वर दोज बेसिकली इट वॉज टू ब्रिंग द कॉपरेशन बिटवीन द कंट्रीज विच वर अर्लियर द पार्ट ऑफ द यू एस एस आर एंड इनिशियली द फाइव कंट्रीज दट इज रशिया कजाकिस्तान किर्गिस्तान तजाकिस्तान एंड चाइना विल कॉपरेट नाउ चाइना इज नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ यू एस एस वॉज नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ यू एस एस आर ऑब्वियसली बट चाइना वाई बिकॉज चाइना हैज सर्टन बाउंड्री इशूज ऑल्सो फाइन हेयर सो बेसिकली फॉर इनहांसिंग द कॉपरेशन बिटवीन दीज फाइव कंट्रीज द शंघाई फाइव ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वॉज क्रिएटेड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स हाउ एवर इन टू थाउजेंड एंड वन World Five will not be appropriate, so change, they changed its name to SCO, that is a Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now within the SCO, there are the two important or the most instrumental wings that are there. Number one is the SCO Secretariat, which is based in Beijing, and other is the Executive Committee of the RATS, Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure. Now this Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure is a dedicated body to reduce the terrorism-related issues into the Central Asia, and it is in the Tashkent. Fine. Now what are the objectives of SCO? SCO's objectives. Now understand this thing, guys. Uh, please don't uh, by heart remember this thing. Any organization which will come. what their objectives will be they will talk that they we, we want to promote the trade we want to promote the connectivity we want to uh, promote the mutual interest all these particular things okay so what they say strengthening mutual trust neighborliness promoting effective cooperation in politics cooperation in trade cooperation in economy cooperation in research and technology culture efforts to ensure peace security stability reduction of terrorism these are the goals so i simply tell you guys don't ever remember the goals there is this particular kind of a rhetoric a, a particular kind of a copy paste kind of a thing that goes and you use these kind of a things fine uh, fine uh, nobody can say that it is not the objective it will always be the objective fine now moving on so basically guys when we talk about the seo shanghai cooperation organization west doesn't perceives seo as a benign or as a moral virtuous organization they say that this organization has been created as a counter to the nato and it is an anti nato organization where russia and china are coming together so that they can build their agenda against the western world and guys actually we see this particular thing that what has happened over the past few years heavy sanctions have been placed on russia on multiple occasions for example when crimea was acquired by russia in 2014 sanctions was imposed now the russia ukraine war is going on sanctions have been imposed on russia but this particular thing has brought russia and china much more closer and when after 2014 sanctions were imposed on russia what happened china signed a 400 billion dollar gas pipeline agreement so that the russian economy could be supported so it has become a place by which russia and china are also coming together under the sco now when we talk about india and pakistan both the countries joined sco as an observer in 2005 and got the full status full member status in 2017 now by joining sco india is trying to balance both the worlds western world and the eastern world of china and russia understand we are also the partner under the quadrilateral security dialogue we are also the friends with the usa at the same time we are also the partners with the sco okay now guys uh, basically within sco since 2014 problems are also going on what problem is that basically india and pakistan they are on very frosty terms since 2014 trade ties diplomatic ties all have been uh, all have been snapped between india and pakistan okay now this particular year guys this particular year guys also uh, uh, you see this particular thing uh, just i will take you to the next article because they are both connected okay now see guys this particular year also just a minute i will take you to the next article because both of them are correct uh, connected i should have even placed them at the same place but just minute yes yes so here we have one more article also guys talking about the seo meet 
So I told you that both India and Russia, uh, both India and Pakistan became the members of SEO in 2017. But since then, the Pakistan and India relations are not good. And this thing is being reflected in the SEO also. For example, I told you that 2023, India has to host the SEO summit. But what happened, guys? First of all, the uh, first of all, India postponed the SEO summit. Why? Because of the because of the visit of the Indian Prime Minister to the USA. And then that particular summit, which was earlier to be conducted in physical format, got converted into the virtual format. Why? Because because bad relations with Pakistan and bad relations with the China that we are right now having. If there would have been physical meet, both would have come to India. Even the Russian president would have come to India. But right now, West is very much against the Russia. So it would not have created good optics. So India first postponed and then converted into the virtual summit. So understand this particular thing, guys, that when we talk about the India, India is trying to balance the West as well as the Russia-China simultaneously. But somewhere, virtual summit is showing this particular thing that India has given less importance to SEO as per this particular article, as per this particular article. Okay. Now, guys, uh, further, let's come back to our original article that we were discussing. So, yes. The article was that, uh, the article was that about the SEO. So, now when we talk about guys the SEO, so, though between India and Pakistan relations are not good, but still the countries are trying to ensure that they are joining the SEOs, all the three council meets, the head of the state meet, head of government, council of foreign ministers, in all of them they are participating. Now coming to the core question, this year, Iran has joined SEO. This year, Iran has joined SEO. And as Iran has joined the SEO, what will be the benefits by joining Iran or why it matters? Now, and uh, guys, after the joining of Iran, SEO has become a nine-member organization. Now, why Iran is important? Guys, if you know, India has already constructed the Cha Bahar port in Iran. Okay. So, basically, guys, you see this particular thing that Central Asia is an important region where India wants to enhance the trade. But in order to reach the Central Asia, either you can use Pakistan or you can use Afghanistan's route. Now, direct boundary with the Afghanistan is right now restricted because of the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. And Pakistan has denied us the transit to reach the Central Asia. So, land-based access is now restricted. So, what is the option? Option is that we will reach to Iran. We will reach to Iran Chabahar port. From there, we might enter to the Afghanistan and from there, we'll go to the Central Asia. This is the route that we now have to reach to Central Asia. This is now the route that we have to reach to the Central Asia. Is it clear or not? So, therefore, we have constructed the Chabahar port in Iran, which is very much important for the connectivity. See, there is one question, SEO established date, dear, these things are not at all important. For example, please don't read these things. Even you will be mixing these dates by the time the exam will come. So, which, which date it got established, etc. Not at all important. Okay, so India has constructed this port, Chabahar port in Iran. At the same time, guys, India is also participating in international north-south transport corridor. Now, what is this north-south transport corridor? So, basically, Russia to Iran, all the regions in between, they will be connected. Russia to Iran would be connected through this international north-south transport corridor. So basically, guys, Iran will be a culmination point. Through Iran, we can access the international north-south transport corridor and it can reach to Russia. And through Iran, by the Chahabahar port, we can reach to the Central Asia. So Iran is very much connect important for the connectivity of India. Okay, And here, India will be able to cooperate with the Iran. Is it clear or not? Then guys, the next thing that comes here is that, uh, so we will be able to avoid the Pakistan, that is the benefit. Then the next thing is that guys, the Central Asian countries, many of them are landlocked and many of them are the double, uh, and one of them, one of them is double landlocked. Double landlocked country is that, uh, a country which is landlocked and the neighbor is also landlocked, that is a double landlocked country. So in the Central Asia, countries, they don't have access to the 
ports so for them iran is also very much important for the connectivity and then guys iran is a historic partner of india also and therefore bringing iran bringing iran in the seo will give one more platform where india can connect with the iran and through now see iran has also been the victim of the terrorism in the past so as iran has been victim of terrorism india has also been the victim of terrorism both can also talk about the terrorism and the safe terror havens that are being provided by the pakistan as well as afghanistan also okay so this is all about it i hope guys that you have understood it now moving on to the next article uh, however one more issue is there as iran has joined the seo usa has become even more irritated because of the bad relations between the iran and usa belarus is also expected to join and with the belarus also the relations are not very much good so it will be it will be impacted later words next year then the next article the new smart bandage raises the bar for treating chronic wounds now this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 3 science and technology prelims examination science and technology as well as for gs paper number 2 health also will take this particular article now before going in this particular article let me tell you some basic information guys suppose you got hurt okay you got a bruise mark okay you got a cut on your skin now automatically your body will heal that particular wound okay there will be a clot that will develop then the different different type of cells different different type of biological processes would happen in your body and a new skin new layer of skin will come and after few months you will find that that your skin is entirely new it will look like that wound never happened but sometimes there are the people who either have suppressed immunity or the people such as who have diabetes they face a lot of problem in healing the wound okay so wound repairing process particularly for the people who are diabetic it becomes very much delayed and even the common cuts common wounds they don't get they, uh, they don't get healed over a period of time so in order to help these people this smart bandage can help so basically guys what has happened recently a study was published into the science advances which provides okay, that now the scientists are working on the smart bandages which will be wearable wireless mechanically flexible kind of bandages okay for example guys you can see on in the picture here this is the photograph of a smart bandage so like a bandaid okay like a bandaid it is a kind of a sticker kind of a thing but it has many of these biosensors electrodes which will help in healing faster which will help in fast healing now let's understand about this particular uh, smart bandage okay so this smart bandage can be used for the treating the wounds in people with diabetes people who receive insufficient blood supply to the place where the wound is there now understand this thing blood supply is very important because blood contains the essential nutrients to treating a wound if there is a nerve damage immune system dysfunction is there where so in those people these bandages will be very much important now how this bandage will work so basically guys there will be a soft stretchable polymer so polymer is a compound so that banded there will be soft stretchy polymer which will be affixed on the a particular wound in that there will be biosensors now these biosensors will monitor the biomarkers in the wound okay they these biosensors in the real time will see that what is the condition of the wound how much percentage the wound has been treated which type of biological process has started and that particular information will be given in the real time to the doctors so that the doctors can modify the treatment they can modify the medicine now then guys basically the data that will be collected by these biosensors it will be transmitted to the printed circuit board printed circuit board that printed circuit board will relay that particular information wirelessly to the smartphone or the tablet which will be reviewed by the physician and on the basis of that information how much progress has been done different different drugs will be released in that particular wound through the hydrogel layer through the hydrogel layer so basically in that sticker there will be a hydrogel layer in which the drug will be infused at the different different stages different different dosages different different strength and different different type of drugs will be used which will heal that particular wound more wound more effectively moreover this particular 
bandage will also uh, encourage the tissue regrowth in that particular region. So, three important things are there. Number one, a stretchable layer. In that layer, biosensors which will give the information with respect to the progress and then there will be the drug delivery through the hydrogel. Fine. So, these are the three components. Okay. Now, the problem, now this is a very good thing, but the problem is that how it will be accessible to the poor people, people who are in the socio-economic, lower socio-economic strata. Now, guys, when we see in the government hospitals particularly, a general surgeon might see 10 patients, 3 to 4 patients will be the ones who have the chronic wounds. Many of them have diabetes, their wounds they don't heal automatically. Okay, 77 million, 25% of the, now we have 77 million diabetic adults in India. And these diabetic adults, they often develop diabetic foot ulcer, they develop certain wounds and often they are not treatable. Okay, in that case, their leg is to be amputated. Okay, all such kind of a things is there. So, these people can get a lot of help by these particular kind of bandages. But the problem is that, problem is that, how they will be able to afford that problem is that government doctors they are so much overburdened fine how they will monitor these bandages also even if you give them anyhow so this is a problem that will come then moving to the next article diminishing returns so guys already we have discussed the SEO this article is also an SEO GS paper number two international issues so uh, already much of the information we have discussed so, few information that you should see here is that when we talk about SEO, SEO, these nine countries, they make one third of the global GDP, one fifth of the global trade, one fifth of the global oil reserve and 44% of the natural gas reserves are there in these SEO countries. So, these SEO countries are economically very important. This year as we have joined SEO, guys, one thing I will recommend you, please watch the yesterday's newspaper also. Okay, please uh, see the yesterday's newspaper also because there we have discussed the key takeaways from the SEO. So, this year we have come out with the multi-alignment and strategic autonomy. Okay, now uh, basically yes, when, India, uh, when we joined the SEO, India stated that the multi-alignment is the goal of India because we want to balance West also, we also balance with the Russia and US, uh, Russia and China also. This also shows the strategic autonomy of India. Strategic autonomy means that India will not have any permanent friend and will not have any permanent enemies. Will choose the friends. Uh, will choose the friends on the basis of the requirement. So we are balancing the Quad, which is the grouping of US, Japan, and Australia, and at the same time we are balancing the SCO. But the article says that this particular year we are not able to balance it very properly because India was the Chair of SEO, but we con con converted into the virtual format. So it shows that we have given less important. By SEO, we have got the benefit also. How we got the benefit? Basically, guys, understand this particular thing ke, that we were the SEO partners. We have not taken any clear position. So as the war was going on, we continued the trade with Russia and we got the excess of uh, cheap fuel, cheap fertilizers with the Russia. So we have got the benefit. But at the same time, as this year's SEO summit, was not conducted in physical format and there were disputes, differences also that came bet between the India and China particularly in the SEO. We discussed it yesterday also but again I will tell you. For example, this year 2023, 2023 was the 10 year anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, also the China came out with the economic strategy for 2030. India and China developed differences on both of them. India not, did not sign. So, under the SEO, proper cooperation even was not able to be achieved. Okay. Now, moving to the next article, an inclusive social policy for migrants. This particular article will see with respect to GS paper number 3, labor issues. GS paper number 3, labor issues. Now, uh, basically guys, the article is first of all giving the case study with respect to the Kerala. Now, when we talk about Kerala guys, so, according to a recent report released by the Kerala Planning Board, this report says that a large number of migrant people from all the different parts of country, they reach to Kerala and there are 34 lakh interstate migrants in Kerala. The migrants which have come from the different, different countries. Now, these migrants, why they are reaching or why they are choosing the Kerala? For the purpose, for the sake of higher wages, there is a regularity of work in Kerala. 
better social and cultural environment is there in the Kerala. So many of the migrant workers are reaching there. But at the same time, at the same time, one more report by the Science and Engineering Research Board. Okay. It provides that actually there are not effective policies to help the migrant. And not this is only in the case of Kerala. Kerala anyhow has a better condition. In the entire country, we don't have effective policies for saving the migrant's interest. Now, what are the concerns that the migrant worker face? Number one is the unity trouble. Unity trouble. Now, understand this particular thing, guys. That often, often migrants, they are not able to organize together in the form of, of a union. So that collectively they can go to the government, can raise their demands. Okay. They don't have such kind of unity. Many number of times interstate mig now see this Interstate Migrant Workmen Act of 1979 is a law. This particular law protects the rights of the migrant workers. But even this Interstate Migrant Workmen Act, it doesn't recognize the present day challenges. Secondly, it has not been properly implemented also by almost all the state governments. Okay. Then the next issue that comes with respect to the migrant worker is that these migrant workers, they often are faced with unhygienic living conditions, unhygienic working condition, lack of social security. They don't get any pension, they don't get any sick leave, they don't get any paternity, maternity relief. There is also a lot of physical abuse of these migrant workers that is done by their contractor, it is done by their thekedar, etc. Okay. So, uh, then further there is a chain of exploitation that is also there. Now, what is the chain of exploitation? Basically, guys, let's understand I am a poor person living in, let's say, in any of the state. I want some work. Now, some agent will approach me or I will approach an agent. That agent will promise me that I will get you a work in a factory, let's say in Kerala. But I will take 10% of your salary. I, I will take 20% of your salary. So many a times, what happens, these agents, they exploit, there is this a chain of exploitation that is created, okay. Often the basic human rights are not given to them, okay. Basic human rights are not given to them. For example, they will not be given leave. They will be asked to work for really long hours. They will be asked to work for really long hours, okay. They will not be, uh, they will not be given the dignity. Now, as per the Hannah Adent, uh, just a minute guys. Now, here if you see the Hannah Arendt, so Hannah Arendt said that every individual deserves the inherent dignity of humanity. Every person should be treated with the respect. But often, such kind of human dignity is not given to these migrant workers. And we often witness these particular things in day-to-day -day life. So, we need to have the system of social justice. So, a way forward has been suggested. And this is the most important part of this particular article. What is the way forward? How the condition of the workers can be improved? Number one. Number one. First of all, there should be the robust data collection. Now, what is the data collection? Rather than the usual numerical data collection, for example, the governments collect the data, for example, 34 lakh migrant worker in Kerala. Okay, this data. Data, 34 lakh migrant worker in Kerala, 5 lakh from Uttar Pradesh, 5 lakh from Bihar, 5 lakh from Madhya Pradesh, 5 lakh from Rajasthan, like this. This is just a numerical data. It is not giving us the much information. Rather than this numerical data, for the entire state, we need to have theme-wise data at the panchayat level. Okay, panchayat-wise theme-level data. For example, in every panchayat, how many migrant worker, what is their socio-economic condition, what caste they belong, what occupation they do, what is the average income that they are earning, how many family members they have. So, a theme-based data needs to be collected. Because first, if you don't have data, you cannot work on any type of welfare. Then second thing is that, Basically, government needs to give them the health, employment, right to cultural life. But these right need, but, but, but they are to be given on, but all these things are to be given to the right based principle. For example, MG Narega is a right based, it, 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 MG Narega is a right. If you don't get work, government will give you the reimbursement. Okay. 
The point is that health, employment, cultural life's rights needs to be given as a matter of right. Government should not be able to refute them back. Okay, they should be justiciable in the court. Then, the third issue that comes here in this particular direction is that, uh, the third issue that comes in this particular direction is that, basically, there also needs to be a collaboration with the original ori, origin, origin state. Now, let's say a person from Uttar Pradesh is going to Kerala. Uttar Pradesh is an origin state. So, origin state should also be taken in account when the destination is state is coming out with any policy for the migrant workers. Then there is a promotion of awareness. People, migrants even, they don't know about their own rights. Even you give them health right, education right, they don't know. So, their awareness needs to be there. Then guys, there also needs, similar to global effort, cultural exchange, community engagement of the, tri of the migrant people. See, a person, let's say from Bihar, is going to the Kerala. Now, the in the Kerala, he all, basically the culture of Kerala will be different than the culture of Bihar. So, basically the festivals that he celebrated in Bihar, he want to celebrate them in Kerala also. He want to connect with the people of his own culture. So, for that, community engagement needs to be there. We need to ensure that how the social integration of migrant worker in the local community is being done. The people, let's say from Bihar, when they are going to Karnataka, Kerala, how they will be integrated in that local culture. For that, arrangement needs to be there. Then there also needs to be the multi-stakeholder policy. Whenever you are coming out with any policy for the migrant worker, migrant, employer, government, okay, labor unions, all needs to be consulted. And we also need to, to refer to the uh, instruments like, like a global compact on migration to ensure all the rights to the migrant people are being given. That is all guys about it. And now moving to the next article. To we'll choose a new palette for India's creative economy. Now this particular article, we'll see guys with respect to GS paper number 3. Okay. Issues related to creative economy. Issues related to the creative economy. Now, what this article is and what is creative economy? Understand this thing guys, that there are so many of the artisans, artists, which are making creative artworks. Somebody is making Kalamkari, somebody is making some kind of Patachitra art, somebody is making some another kind of an art. In this particular, in this particular thing, a lot of employment is generated, fine. There will be a lot of value of these artworks, they will be exported into the other countries, okay. Even the artisan's family depend on them. So, basically, the creative economy is a very important component. Now, guys, understand this particular thing, that when we talk about the context of India, so, digital platforms, online platforms, they have given the platform to many of the artists, but actually, the artisans who are performing the traditional arts, they don't have proper market access still, to how to market their products. Digital divide, they don't know how to use internet, how to use the uh, uh, internet platforms, okay. Now, there is a very big problem. First of all, we find this particular thing, guys, that the artist, fine. First of all, government, uh, first of all, guys, for the, now many of the artists, they are practicing such arts which are actually dying, okay. There is no industry, no organized place where these particular artists can get a job. They have to be a kind of a entrepreneur kind of things only. I am making some artwork, I have to make it, I have to sell it. There is no industry which will employ me. So, jobs are not there, economic growth is not there, okay. Fine, all these things are not there in this particular artwork. Secondly guys, secondly guys, when we talk about this creative economy, this creative economy, if we tap them, it can fuel all these particular things simultaneously. How? First of all, basically guys, for art sector, art sector, if we tap them, it can create a lot of jobs. It can create a lot of jobs, okay. Economic growth, tourism, for example, many people are going to a particular place because of a particular handloom that is made at that place. They go to a particular place because of a particular painting that is made at that place. They go, they learn the art, they see the artisan's way of life. It can promote tourism. It can promote the export. So, creative economy, first of all, in the creative economy, now, Two-fold problem I have trying to explain. Number one, in the creative economy, these creative artists, they don't have support. They don't have any industry, organized industry in which they can be employed. 
they don't get government support but if we help them rather they seeking the job they can create the jobs they can create the export potential they can promote the tourism around these particular uh, these particular arts now recently what has happened unesco world conference unesco world conference on cultural policies and uh, sustainable development was organized that is the mondia cult 2022 and it has discussed the issues with respect to the artist now first of all guys when we talk about the artist government support to these artists has been very much less cultural institutions government institutions financial support etc are often not given to the artist now you see this particular thing that many financial assistance program are being driven by the government but often there is a lack of transparency who will get the financial assistance from the government how they will get the assistance there is no systemic or rotational mechanism to provide the assistance selection process see government comes out with many schemes and give support but awareness selection process how much support will be given transparency all these issues are there then next when we talk about the traditional art there is also the crime that is going on fake copies of the art okay fake copies of the art mass produced copies of the art if let's say one artist in one of a rural village makes a painting their copyrights are not secured copyright infringement is going on all these issues are there so therefore guys how to help these creative artists so what is a workable solution in this capacity in this direction so we need to create the capacity building centers capacity building centers now the capacity building centers will be the dedicated units into the different different parts of the country which will create ecosystem of innovative technologies they will bring the artist they will bring the startups startups will help these mar artists how they can get to the market they will be given the technologies what they need they will be given the skill development okay all the business know-how infrastructural support will be given to them okay investor support if it is needed to these artists that investor support will be given to them they will also be given the networks as for example suppose i am an artist i am making a kind of a pen painting i want to sell it in europe i don't have connections i don't know the process all these supports will be given by these capacity building centers okay so this is something that will happen it will also help in knowledge sharing economic empowerment all these particular kind of things then the next thing is that guys basically in india there is also the problem let's see this particular thing what has happened in the western countries the private private companies they have identified some of the artworks and have created a fashion brand account fashion brand around them in india that particular thing has not evolved that much so there are the industry gaps which can be filled by the which can be filled by the private players okay uh, then guys the next thing that is there the next thing that is there basically these facilitation centers will also be focusing on uh, uh, this, uh, this facilitation center will also be focusing on shedding lights on the global uh, sh uh, shedding lights on the emerging trends at a global level which can also be tapped by our indigenous artist and how they can take the advantage of that so these are all the solutions particularly creating the facilitation center to empower them okay that is all about it and now moving to the next article so uh, here we have an article a global rupee may raise volatility now guys first of all uh, this article will see with respect to the issues related to indian economy now first of all you need to know some basic things government of india is promoting the internationalization of rupee or rupee internationalization what is rupee internationalization we want that as right now the dollar is the acceptable currency in the world india becomes the acceptable currency the international settlements should happen in the terms of the rupee okay this is the government's goal but in this direction india interdepartmental group has submitted a report and they said that it will increase the volatility of rupee in the international market now how fine very simple logic understand this thing right now guys you see this particular thing that whenever the price of rupee in the front of dollar goes down what happens reserve bank of india will interfere okay in between okay now guys understand this thing price of any currency depends on the demand and supply if demand is more of a particular currency the price of that currency will go up 
if the demand is less and supply is more, the price of that currency will go down. Okay. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that if we want to ensure, second, one more, one more issue I'll tell you. Right now, guys, we control how much money or how much rupee should be there into the market. For inflation also, we control that particular thing. Now, if India will become the international currency, then India has to be a currency. The, uh, then the issue that comes here is that, then the issue that comes here is that, then there will be the obligation of our, on our country to supply the currency to meet the global demand. Let's say America, let's say, let's, uh, let's say guys, the Iran or uh, you take example, let's say the Malaysia is doing some trade with the Vietnam and they say we do, will do this trade in the terms of rupee. Now, they need rupee for that particular thing. India, the supply of rupee might be not that much that we can cater to us as well as we can cater to the international demand. Okay, so what will happen? There will be an obligation on a country to supply its currency to meet the global demand and it might come in conflict with the domestic monetary policy. Right now, domestically, we might be following the tight monetary policy or any other kind of a monetary policy. So, if you have a domestic monetary policy, then that domestic monetary policy might come in conflict when you have to supply the money to the other countries also. It is called as the Triffin Dilemma. However, the benefits will also come. Benefits also will come for, with that particular thing. But at the same time, there will be some concerns that are there. Okay. So, this is guys in very simple. Uh, however, guys, uh, 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 this is about this particular thing. However, right now, if I tell you internationalization of rupee, it is a very long road to take. Okay. Uh, then the main practice question for today. Despite a range of welfare, health and literacy schemes for migrant workers, India lacks a broader policy that addresses social justice for the community. Comment 10 marker question for GS paper number 3. That is all guys about it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. Thank you so much guys.